Thank you, son. Start taking care of yourself now. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming, Dr. Paulson. Listen, Michael. When you think you're ready, maybe I can help you with a job. I know a nursing home is looking for somebody. You've done such a heroic job here, I'm sure you could handle it. with a drunk and then cancer some life she had you michael I'm here about a job. Really? Um, actually, I heard there might be one. Oh, okay. Well, I guess you need to talk to our director about that. Oh, Alice, is Helen available? Yeah, I think so. Come on, I'll show you to her. Thank you. You're welcome. I am so sorry about this. We are even more shorthanded than usual. I've got two aides out sick today. We'll make the beds up later. So you were telling me about your last job. Uh, yes, I was a clerk at Heller's Grocery. Mm -hmm. And then my mother got worse and I had to quit. So your only nursing experience was with your mother? Yes. You took care of her all by yourself? That's tough. So tell me exactly what you did for her. Well, for the past year and a half, pretty much everything. Um, I fed her, bathed her, gave her her medications, but mostly just tried to keep her spirits up. That would be breakfast. Come on. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are y'all today? Molly, I love that blouse. That's beautiful. Thank you, Helen. How are you today, Billy Ray? We're just feeling fine. Great as usual. How are you, Stanley? Terrible. Well, that's a lot better than yesterday. Much better. Peggy, you've got some mail in the office. I have to order some blues in your size, but in the meantime, try this lovely on. Thank you. Esther, this is Michael. He's going to be helping us out from now on. Michael, this is Esther Hewish. It's a pleasure to meet you, ma'am. Michael, why don't you gather up all the old bedding on this floor and bring it downstairs when you're through? Sure. Those pictures of your family? 
Sorry. Just trying to make conversation. I was quite beautiful once. Thank you. For what? For not saying, and you still are. Do you know how often people say that? It's so ridiculous. Patronizing. I'll try to remember that. Tell your friends. I will. No, you won't. It's a pleasure to meet you. Let's do it. Yeah. Hey, looks like you got the job. Yeah, lucky for me. <laughs> it's lucky for us. Michael, how'd it go with Esther? She's tough. Yes, she needs to get out of her room. Maybe you could take her outside, walk with her sometime. Sure. You like garlic, don't you? Do I like garlic? I thought I'd do a basic spaghetti sauce to pep it up a bit. <laughs> that sounds good. Or we could just have a big bowl of okra. Okra? Yeah. Don't you remember? That's how we met. When I was working here, you mean? Yes, but it was because of the okra. You don't remember that part? Uh-uh. The store is having a big sale on uh, okra, and I asked you how to cook it, and you said you had no idea. <laughs> well, yeah, that sounds right. Well, most guys would have tried to fake that. But you, you went and got that, that card from somewhere, and it had all the recipes and all the instructions, everything you ever want to know about okra. I still have it. You do? That was the first thing you gave me. Well, I remember talking to you. And then wanting to keep talking. You were so earnest <laughs> and helpful. You're going to leave and you, you turn back to ask me something. Oh, yeah, I remember. It was like, uh, how much okra do you think I need, you know, just for myself? <laughs> and then right. you said, what, three or four pounds? <laughs> three or four pounds. Oh, I'd still be eating it. <laughs> and I came back the very next day. Yeah. And that's when I asked you out. I don't remember why you came back, though. Well, it wasn't for more okra. The Veterans Hospital, Neil. It's okay, Henry. Just go to the doctor. You'll be back in time for lunch. I can hardly wait. His physician's name is Dr. Heath, Michael. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Helen, hold up. Oh, goodness. Here you go. Hold on. Uh, can't forget that. Henry's being a little uncooperative today. Do you know if he's had a fall recently? I don't know. But he's kind of unsteady on that crutch. Not that unsteady. And not death either. He has a bad bruise on his back. With that cough, it's very uncomfortable. I prescribed this new medication. Doctor. Uh, here's some samples of getting started. Okay. Please tell Helen to let me know if there's any change. Yeah, I will. Thanks again, Doctor. Yeah, sure. Okay, here we go, Henry. Oh, hold on. Let me just get the brakes on. So, should I call the pharmacy about these new prescriptions? Actually, I'll do that. One of my many chores. Okay, well, Dr. Heath did give me some samples. Maybe we can get him started on these? Yeah, sure. Give him a couple, and I'll take the rest of them away. Okay, there you go. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, Henry. Good luck. This should help. Ah, would you like a glass of juice? They don't have glasses, they have plastic cups. But yes, please. Put it on the table. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. You're still here. Working here, I mean. That surprises you? When you didn't come by for the sheets, I thought it moved on. I had to take someone to the hospital this morning. Henry, do you know him? Henry? Of course. 
He was a soldier. Did he tell you that? No. Hardly said anything at all. In the Second World War, he was wounded in France. Watch your step. Sorry. If it were simply a matter of financial need, there'd be no question. And your academic records in the two years that you completed were outstanding. You certainly qualify on that basis. Our concern is about your lack of extracurricular activities. We expect the recipient of a presidential scholarship to try to better the community. I wish I'd been able to. I've been working after school since I was 15. Then, as my mother's health deteriorated, I, I was forced to leave college to care for her. Which raises a much more serious objection to your candidacy. How do we know you won't drop out again? I give you my word. Yes, well, we'd all like to accept that, but as trustees of this foundation, what guarantee can you give us as to your intentions? Well, my mother can't die again. I guarantee you that. <laughs> Any more questions for Mr. Caddington? Thank you, Michael. We'll let you know. I don't know. I guess it went OK. Great. Except for that comment. I don't know. Maybe even that was OK. I mean, Dean Scott, the head of the committee, she winked at me when I was, uh, when I was leaving. Oh, she must like you. <laughs> no, Faye, don't worry. She's not my type. It's all set, Mom. We've already got the turkey order. Oh. It's so nice to get outside. Michael! Hey! Hi. Hi, um, Esther. This is Faye Morrow. Faye, this is Esther Hewish. Hello. I'm pleased to meet you. I hope you don't mind. I just was in the area. I thought I'd see where my boyfriend works. Hmm. Would you like to walk with us? Sure. Are you cold? Oh, no. I should have brought my scarf. Would you like to go back in? No. Thank you. I'll run back in and get it for you. Oh, that... That, that would be nice. Okay. Do you mind? Be right back. Don't worry. I won't run away. There's a bench over there. Would you like to sit down? All right. If you'll sit with me. OK, I can do that. I sense something in Michael, a kind of melancholy. His mother died recently. Maybe that's why. That would explain it. And just a few weeks ago. That's good. He has you then. It's really beautiful here. Yeah. Here we are, Esther. Oh, thank you. You're very welcome. Michael, would you mind if I just sat here for a while by myself? No, that would be fine. Um, we'll be back in a few minutes. Take your time. It was nice to meet you. Yes, dear, it has been nice. So, Faye, what's going on? I just got accepted to UCLA Medical School. When did you find out? Just now, this morning. Oh, Michael. 
UCLA! Oh, it's my first choice. Is it okay that I came here? Because I didn't want to wait to tell you. Sure, of course. You kidding? Good for you. There's a catch, though. My acceptance is conditional on my completing two advanced courses. So? Well, they're not offered here, and I checked I can take them out there, transfer all the credits, graduate on time, all of that. Well, when would you go? January. Oh. It's the only way that I can start with my class in the fall. We knew I was going to go somewhere. Sure. Just so sudden. We have a month. I'm coming back for the summer. Faye, I'm really happy for you. It's wonderful news. So, Faye, you must be so excited. And it's all so sudden. You're really leaving for UCLA next month? Uh, next week, actually. It's just for a few days. Yeah, there wasn't any dorm space available. So we've got to look for a place for Faye to live. It's a tough school to get into, I hear. I guess it doesn't hurt to have a professor for a dad. Yeah. It didn't hurt that she was the smartest girl in the school, either. Imagine how her Faye is going to be a doctor. We're all so proud of you, honey. Now, some of you may not know this, but Michael here is also in the medical profession. Really? He's working as a nurse. Well, as a nurse's aide, to be precise. It's just temporary. Well, I think that Faye and Michael should just get married and move to California together. <clears throat> well, I think they should. Um, Abby, dear, it's not polite to tell other people what they should do. Well, why? You and Daddy do it all the time. Man, I can't believe this. Problem? Uh, yeah, Helen has me on for Christmas Eve, late shift. You have a family thing to go to? Oh, much better than that. Big party. Oh. Well, I could fill in for you. I mean, everyone's just going to be sleeping. Really? You don't have something going on with your girlfriend? No, no plans. No, I'd be happy to. That would be <laughs> absolutely fantastic. You know, I have people expecting me there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better not miss it, then. I'll, uh, I'll tell Helen to put me down. Well, thank you. Yeah. Do you want to go to lunch? I mean, I know it's not much, but at least let me buy you a sandwich. <laughs> All day with the old really gets to me. Do you notice how they never laugh? I mean, they just complain. <laughs> they don't all complain. Yeah. Some don't do anything, they're the worse. Hi, Alice. Hey. <laughs> like that Esther that you walk with? What a case. I've been there two years, and uh, I don't think she said ten words to me. Hmm. Well, she talks to me. A little. Lucky you. Here you go, Alice. Thanks. <laughs> so how'd you wind up at Whitewood? My dad. Thought I needed time in the trenches. You don't know. My dad is Starley Richards. He's head of the State Office of Social Welfare uh, Services. Yeah. I'm being groomed for a management job. Wow, like Helen's. Oh. Higher than that, I hope. <laughs> Anyhow, how's your girlfriend? She's sailing off to med school soon, huh? Mm-hmm. UCLA. Wow. She's really gorgeous. She is gonna cut a swath right through those young interns. I mean, <laughs> if it weren't for you, she would. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome home. So tell me, what's it like? Oh, it's a bungalow. And it's got lots of room, and there's no amois, real closets, and oh, there's even a fireplace. You're just, you're gonna love it. <laughs> that sounds great. So, are you hungry? I could fix you something. Nah, I don't want to get spoiled. I like to spoil you. Oh, what do you think of oyster stew? You want to make oyster stew? Oh, no, not tonight. It's for Christmas Eve. We always have some sort of fish thing on Christmas Eve. We're just trying to decide. Um, 
I'm working the late shift Christmas Eve. You're working? Can you get out of it? Actually, I volunteered. Why? I mean, you knew we'd be doing something. Uh, to be honest, Faye, it's my first Christmas with Elmo. And uh, I just felt like I needed to be with the people at Whitewood who aren't with their families. Hey, let's spend Christmas Day together. Just the two of us. Make it a special day. Oh, but I already promised the sorority that I helped them distribute gifts to the needy on Christmas Day. Oh, well, I can help. Uh, sure. Fine decorating party. Esther's upstairs and you're out here. Why don't you come in and help us decorate, Henry? I wasn't invited. Everyone's invited. Nobody said anything to me about it. Well, I'm asking you right now. Okay, Henry, why don't we sit down on the lovely blue one and get you a little egg nog? Oh, do I? And the reason the lights don't work is you've got to test the box. Well, that's right, Molly. Actually, why don't you, uh, why don't you help Diane? Sure. Peggy. Hey. Let me try the smaller dogs first. Peggy, hey, hey. Uh, maybe we shouldn't eat the popcorn. It's probably a little stale. Oh, well, last year, Henry ate it all. I didn't get any. I'll help. <laughs> Henry, are you all right? Can't you give him a pill or something? Michael, these, these lights still aren't working. <laughs> OK. Uh, Michael, you have a phone call. Is it Jack Murrow? Uh, can, you get, can you get his number, and I'll call him back? <coughs> yeah, I can do that. You, you tried to shut me up. They all tried to shut me up. <gasps> Oops. <laughs> Hi. Good. Glad you could make it. Mr. Murrow? Get your beer? No, oh, thanks. You sure? Yeah. How about pizza? You do eat pizza, don't you? <laughs> yes. Well, that's good since I already ordered one. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> so, uh, Faye tells me you're up for the presidential scholarship. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. That is great. Mm -hmm. Education is the key. Yeah. Michael. I want to ask you a question. How do you feel about fate? I love her. I am glad to hear you say that. Because it tells me that you want the best for fate. Oh, of course. Michael, Faye is fond of you. She wants the best for you, too. And I know that she agrees that this is the time for you kids to concentrate on your education. And I think it's time for you to exit the relationship. You seem very low today. Just a little preoccupied. I had a meeting with Faye's father. Oh, what do you want? He was talking about how I should stay out of Faye's way. That we both need to focus on our education and not rush into anything. I don't know. Maybe a lot of what he said made sense. How so? I don't want to get in Faye's way. I don't want to hold her back. Maybe I should just let her focus on school. Oh, he's trying to make you feel guilty for loving Faye. You trust your feelings. Love like that is so precious. I know. Talking about Thomas? Yeah. 
How do you know that name? Have you been reading my letters? Well, no, of course not. You've been prying. You have no right to pry into my it, life. It, it was on the locket, Esther. On no, the no, back no, of no. Locket. No right. No right. Esther, come on. The party started. I don't feel like a party. It's Christmas Eve. You're not going to sit up here by yourself. Why not? Because I say so. Much better. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Henry. Merry Christmas. I'm sorry I accused you of crying yesterday. No. You were right. It was none of my business. You're a kind young man, Michael. Thank you for staying with us tonight. Merry Christmas, Esther. Hi. Hey, Merry Christmas from the Signify New Sorority. We have presents for you? May we come in? Please. Oh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Children, these people yeah. brought us some yeah. presents. Christmas, Thank you so much. Yeah. Presents for everyone. This one's for you. Thank you. Here you go. Let's see what we got here. Here. What do you say, son? Yeah. Thank you. Toy train just like I've always wanted. Oh, oh, Michael, it's a Merry Christmas. A train, a train. Oh, thank you so much. What's going on? They're here from the church. No, 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 no. What are we doing? Like? Charity cases? Come on. No, thanks. No, thanks. Come on. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That's all right. Thank you. Here you go. Come on, here. Hey, give me that. Come on. Give me that train. Please, Dad. Yeah, take your train. We don't need your chair. Please, Daddy. Oh, I think I know who that's for. It's for you. Oh, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, I think we got another one for you oh, here, too. Oh, thank there. you. Hi, uh -huh. right, Merry Christmas, you guys. Something wrong? Nothing. Just remembering something. Wanna tell me? Nah. Ghosts of Christmas past. Hey. Enough of the good deeds, huh? Let's go get our presents. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. At least we both won't be cold now. <laughs> Merry oh. Christmas. Merry
Well, it opens and, and um, you can put a picture in it if you want. Oh, it's, yeah, it's lovely. It's not what you wanted. No, it's... I'm sorry. No, it's a beautiful present. You were expecting something else. No. Yes. Just when you said that you wanted to be alone today and... I saw a jewelry box, sure, I thought. Hey. Well, don't you still think about it, us getting married? All the time. But... Maybe it's not right. For you, I mean. I mean, this is such an opportunity. I don't want to hold you back. I want what's best for you. What's best for me, Michael? I want you by my side. That is what's best for me. And isn't that what we planned? I just feel you'd be better off without me. You're breaking up with me. No. No. I, I don't know. Well, it sure sounds like you're breaking up with me. Maybe you better figure it out. So what do you do now? I don't know. I was just trying to be realistic about everything. <laughs> Sometimes that's exactly the wrong thing to be. <laughs> you have to talk to her before she leaves. I won't change anything. Do you think life gives us second chances? Probably make the same mistakes all over again. I don't know. I've never seen them in my life. Oh, yeah. Walking for today? There's a box. Could you open it, please? Look inside. That's the guy in your locket, Thomas. Thomas. Thomas for 45 years. But... I never sent them. There's something else. Now, if you have the time... I'd like you to see this. That's the Belltown boarding house. I went to work there when I was 16, after my parents died. 
Is that you? Yeah. The day I married Frank, my first husband. Uh, you were so... Yeah. Yeah. This is Matthew. Our son. He was mentally handicapped. Well, that must have been hard. Yeah. Frank never accepted him. He blamed me. He was a drinker. And violent, too. I'm sorry. We got married before I knew any of this. After a year, he abandoned us and went to Nevada. I heard he was killed in a fight. But he left me some money, which I used to buy the boarding house. Oh, my. Thomas? Thomas. He came to look for gold. But he wasn't like the others. How so? All the miners were a rough bunch, mostly. Thomas was kind. Matthew loved him. Yeah, you can tell. <laughs> After a few months, he spent more time helping me with the boarding house than prospecting. I was drawn to him, of course, but now something frightened me. Well, after your first husband. Yeah, he hurt me badly. This is during the war? Right at the beginning of the Korean War. After his training, Thomas came back for a few days before he was sent overseas. He was very sweet. But then one afternoon, he said he had a surprise for me. forget what he said. I came here to find gold, and I believe I found it. He said he loved me, he asked me to marry him, he asked me to wait for him. But... You turned him down? Yeah. I still don't know. I was afraid. I knew he was going away. And if he didn't come back, I couldn't face the pain. That would be too hard. But you loved him. More than I knew. He left in the morning before I got up. Then I knew I'd made a terrible mistake. But... It was too late. He was gone. Hello? Hey, Abby, it's Michael. Oh, Michael. Listen, Faye's leaving early. The day after tomorrow, you've got to get down here and talk to her. I know, I know. Can you just no, I don't. Please. Abby? Hello? Abby? Listen. I thought we agreed that that sort of emotional distraction was the last thing Faye needed right now. Can, can I just talk to her? No, I'm sorry. She doesn't wish to speak with you. Mr. Morrow, I'd just like to speak with you. Goodbye, please. Michael. Listen. So did you get to talk to her? No. I tried. Your time. She's leaving tomorrow. I can't stop her. You know, her father won't even let me talk to her. 
I'm beginning to hate him just as much as my own father. Tell me about your father. Uh, uh, he was a drunk. He, he made my mother and I miserable for 15 years. And then he walked out. Never saw him again. Hated him. And yet, and yet when he left, it was awful. Oh, maybe you didn't hate him after all. Oh, yes, I did. I still do. What about Thomas? Did he, uh, did he survive the war? Yep, but I didn't know it. I wrote to him for two years. Care of the army. I never heard back. Then I got married again. Really? Not for love. For loneliness. And for help. An older man, a nice man. And that summer... The war ended. I was doing the dishes. Matthew came running. Tom, Tom, Tom. There he was, standing at the gate. We sat down, had some lemonade. Oh. Took me a good hour to tell him I was married. When I did, something seemed to die in him. What did you do? Oh, nothing I could do. Five years later, my husband died of a heart attack. Then I went looking for Thomas. Did you find him? I found his house. The little girl was playing outside. I asked her name, Katie. Katie. Asked her daddy's name. Mr. Tom Ricorsi. And her mother came out smiling. I said I have the wrong street and I drove home. Wrote my first letter to Thomas that day. But I never sent it. Could never break up that family. That winter, Matthew died. He got polio. I've been alone ever since. But I never stopped hoping I might see Thomas again. So there's no listing for Thomas Ricorsi anywhere in the state? No, sir. There is no listing. OK. Yeah, thank you. Listen, listen. I got the scholarship. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> oh, really, congratulations. Listen, hey, I know why you've been avoiding me, okay? It's just been so complex. No. Michael, it's not. You want to guarantee that everything's going to be perfect. I can't give that to you. I was willing to take that risk, but you weren't. <sighs> oh. 
I've always loved you. Thanks for covering for me the other night. Are you okay? Couldn't be better. Uh, well, maybe a little better. Oh. What, did your girl go off to play doctor? Something like that. You got any plans for New Year's? Because I know a party. Uh... I don't think so. Okay, sure. I mean, staying home alone. Rooting. Oh, it definitely has its appeal, I guess. Actually, I was thinking about coming here and banging bed pants. Cute. <laughs> Come on, it's a party. You know, fun party. You remember that, don't you? Woo! <laughs> I don't know. Come on. It's just a party. Michael! Hey, Alice. I'm glad you could make it. Oh, I'll see you inside. All right. <laughs> Great. Oh, thanks to you. You pass a loser. It's my friend. You want some champagne? Excuse me. Excuse me. Right. Champagne. Uh, you know what? I'm going to get a, a ginger ale. Uh, one ginger ale, please. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah? Oh, hey, guys, this is Michael. Oh, hi. Oh, Fellow hey, prisoner Michael. at Whitewood. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I think we're the, uh, the guards, not the prisoners. <laughs> yeah, speak for yourself, Michael. <laughs> I guess I am, Alice. Okay. I'll give you one. Hey, you know, Alice. Maybe, maybe I should just go. I mean, it's getting late. All right. She's not thinking about you, Michael. She's already forgotten about you. Oh, good. You showed up. Alice, Benny, and Carla all phoned in sick today. Is that any way to start a new year? <laughs> You don't look any too perky yourself. No, I'm fine. OK. I need some prescriptions refilled at the Veterans Hospital. Alice is out. I don't have the time. Do you mind? It's not a problem. Good. I think it's obvious we have to credit the procedure. Hey, Michael. Oh, hey, Dr. Heath. 
I even pulled up a set of his old x-rays. The difference was staggering. You could clearly see the expansion of the arteries. Esther! I'll see you later. Happy New Year. you find it? He's a soldier. Uh, when I was down at the Veterans Hospital this morning, I asked that they had a vet named Ricorsi. He's living with his daughter. That's why there's no phone this day. His daughter, Katie. Then they told me his wife died four years ago. Do you want to go see him? Presentable. Beautiful. I am so pleased to meet you. Dad's waiting for you on the back porch. You know, my middle name is Esther. I'm Esther from Bethel Town. <laughs> you gave me this locket, remember? daughter. Kate. She takes good care of me. Uh -huh. I'm glad to know you're well. I uh, have a new sweater.
Oh. Hi. Hi. I thought you might still be up. I'm really sorry about today. When I called, the, the daughter said he had some health problems, but I had no idea. It wasn't meant to be. That's all there is to it. Have you heard from Faye? No. No, that maybe that's another one of those isn't meant to be. I don't know. Maybe we're all just prisoners of circumstance. What if you hadn't had a child? Or the war hadn't come? Or if my mother hadn't had cancer? My father had been a father. Things might have been different, but they aren't. And there's just nothing we can do about that. No, you're wrong. There is something you can do. And you must. Can't give up Faye. And you cannot use your father as an excuse for all the bad things in your life. You have to forgive him. How can you say that? I don't owe him a thing. You owe it to yourself. You don't know what you're talking about, all right? You, you want me to forgive him after what he did to me and my mom. I will never forgive him. Deciding to forgive is the first step toward healing. Your anger is hurting you, not him. You have to let it go. Listen, you have no right to lecture me, all right? Just because you've made a mess of your life, you don't know me. You don't know anything that I've been through. You don't understand me, so just... You're a pathetic old woman. You're bitter and unhappy, and you're totally oblivious to anyone else's pain. He's up all night coughing, driving everyone else crazy. Well, he's probably in pain. Look, he, he won't let me near him. Do you, do you want to try? <laughs> Henry, I need you to swallow this. It'll help you sleep. Okay, there we are. Keep warm, okay? Good night. Michael Keddington? Yeah. I'm Detective Kincaid. It's Detective Ross. May we come in? Yeah, come on in. I'd just like to ask you a few questions. Uh, sure. Uh, what about? The death of Henry McCord. Henry? Death? What, what do you mean? His body was found this morning. Oh, no. I'm gonna have to detain you, Mr. Keddington.
We have a witness. Staff member at the Whitewood says you were the last person to be seen with Mr. McCord. Yes, I saw him. I mean, I don't know if I was the last or not. Apparently, I wasn't. So you admit that you were with him? Yes, but he was still alive. After you beat him? Beat him? What are you talking about? The autopsy revealed that the body was covered with bruises. Can you explain that? No, I mean, he had a hard time walking. Maybe he fell. We found drugs in your locker, Mr. Keddington. What do you have to say about it? I don't use drugs. This is crazy. Yeah, well, we also found drugs at your home. What drugs? Oxycodone, codeine. My mother's prescriptions. Come on. Her name is all over the bottles. Mr. Keddington, if you cannot afford an attorney, a public defender will be assigned to you. Hola, ¿cómo está? Muy bien, gracias. Bigger and better every day. Gracias. Michael Keddington? Yes. Hi, I'm Mande Bada. The court has appointed me to represent you. Oh, hi. Sorry I couldn't get here sooner. How are you doing? Pretty lousy. Yeah, I'll bet. Well, let's see if we can get you out of here. Do you have any money or assets? No. Any friends or family who'd be willing to help you out? I thought this was supposed to be free. Oh, no, it's not for me. You have a bail hearing in 10 minutes. Um, I see you have several priors, a DUI and three drunken disorders. What? what are you talking about? It's here on your record. <sighs> That's not me. Well, it's your name, and isn't this your address? That's my father. He, he uses that address sometimes. It's probably the only one he can remember. Are you ready to post bail at this time? Your Honor, my client has insufficient collateral to obtain a bond. As the sole caretaker for his late mother, he was forced to deplete his personal finances. I request that he be released on his own recognizance. On what basis? He's lived here all his life, he poses no flight risk, and he has no history of violence. But he does have a number of priors, Your Honor. No, he doesn't. Those records refer to my client's father. The prosecution is so eager to convict, they didn't bother to check the date of birth. Uh, our mistake, Your Honor. Uh, even so, this is a very serious charge. Agreed. Does your client have any personal references? Yes, my client was just awarded the Presidential Scholarship at the University. It's very prestigious. All right, request is granted until a trial date is set. In the meantime, Mr. Keddington, your employment at the Whitewood facility has been suspended. You're not to go within 100 yards of Whitewood. Yeah. I'm very sorry to have to tell you this, but in view of your current situation, the committee has suspended your scholarship. Pending a full determination of the facts. I hope you understand. Yeah. Sure, I, I understand. Again, I'm so sorry, and good luck. I'm so worried for you. I need to apologize. Mm -hmm. Last time I was here, I was... What I said was unfair. I'm sorry. I upset you. I know that. No need to dwell on it. This accusation is just terrible. You'll be exonerated. I know it. You must have faith. In what? Michael, you can't be here. I know. I I believe in you. Why are you 
are you doing this? Why are you setting me up? <laughs> that is ridiculous. I mean, who, who would believe that? I believe that. You need to get out of here. Now, you need to leave me alone! Go! This is all gonna come down on your head. Amanda. Hey, I Hi. didn't know you made house calls. <laughs> Don't get used to it. I gotta sit down. Yeah, come on over here in the door. Well, you didn't help yourself any with your little stunt. Now Alice is asking for a restraining order. It says you're stalking her. Yeah, well, you know, I didn't go there to see her. Anyway, that's not why I'm here. Something's come up. Well, now what? I talked to Alice Richards' father. He doesn't relish in the publicity this case is going to bring. He wants the public to have confidence that state licensed facilities such as Whitewood are safe. I suspect he may be trying to save his job or possibly his daughter, but I think he might be pressuring the DA to offer you a deal. What kind of a deal? Plead guilty to a lesser charge. Battery, you'll do minimum jail time, possibly a year. <laughs> Why would I plead guilty to anything? I mean, I didn't hit him. Well, I can't tell you what to do, Michael. I can only offer you the choices. There's got to be something else we can do. Sure. We go to trial and take our chances. If they convict you, looking at 10 to 15 years. I think about the deal. It might be the best way. You really need to eat something. Keep your strength up. Please. I'm not hungry. I shouldn't have allowed you to go see Thomas. I'm sorry. I don't regret it. Well, I do. I got my second chance. I'm sorry about this, but I can't let anybody see you here. She's failing. I thought a visit from you might make a difference. Of course. Go on in. Oh. says you're not feeling well. Ah, oh, no, that's not important. Tell me about yourself. Has anything happened? Kind of. Um, the powers that be, they don't want any bad publicity. Well, they don't even want a trial. So they offered to let me off really easy if if I admit I'm guilty. But you're not guilty. Should you do that? I don't want to spend the rest of my life in jail. Won't it follow you forever? I don't care what other people think. But it's not what other people think, it's what you think of yourself, your self-respect. Self-respect. I walked out the door 10 years ago. I, I could barely even post bail because of my father. The police oh, no, dug up, uh, the police dug up a bunch of old drunk arrests. Michael, and they think they were mine because of my name. I just don't want to think talk, about him anymore. Talk. You know, your hatred for your father is just like I was with my first husband. 
But you know, Frank did love me in his own way. It was good for me and Matthew that he left. I think he knew it was better he went. Of course, I didn't know that then. I grew bitter. Kind of protective shell. But old age gives perspective. If I hadn't married Frank, I'd never have been blessed with my Matthew. Well, look what the cat dragged in. Hi. Hi, it is. High time, some might say. You coming in or you just passing by? I can't lend you any money. Let's get that straight. I, I don't need money. Well, good. How about a drink, then? What can I get you? Nothing. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. It's not money, it's not booze. To what do I owe this honor? Things have, have been... <laughs> Things, right? Hey, you can relax. I know all about it. <laughs> Getting competitive with your old man. Oh, yeah, I had a few write ups in my day. Nothing like this, though. Front page. Very impressive. So, did you do it? No. Well, anyway, it's very impressive. Drugs, murder. I hope you got a good lawyer. I do. A public defender? Yes. <laughs> Better hope they offer you a deal. That's the best way out if you can't afford a fancy lawyer. Don't fight him, Mikey. People like us never win. Tell your lawyer to get you a deal. You gotta be realistic, I always told you that. You sure I can't get you a drink? No. What's the matter, you don't wanna drink with your old man? I don't drink. Oh, of course. You think that uh, you'll turn into me? Is that, is that it? No. I'll never be like you. Not a killer, not a drinker. Take after your mother. But you always did. So, uh, 
How is she? You don't know? What don't I know? She died. When? October. Well, why didn't you tell me? I thought you knew. Well, how was I supposed to know? I assumed you knew. Assumed what? That I knew? Or you assumed that I was drunk and unconscious in a ditch somewhere? I loved her, Mikey. <laughs> you knew that. October? I don't even remember October. <laughs> returning for Palmer? Just a second. Hello? Hi. You got an answer? No, I don't have an answer yet. The clock's ticking. Well, I understand that, but you're gonna... Actually, hold on one second. I see him right now. Hi. It's the DA's office. They say they're gonna withdraw their offer. Unless... That's fine. I want a trial. Oh, actually, I do have an answer. What's up? No deal. No deal? We'll see you in court. Crazy? Maybe a little. But I also think you're innocent. Leave your suit left. Okay, so Can I ask you something? Sure. When's your baby due? Oh, March. And you're still working? <laughs> well, I believe in trying to make the world a better place. Still got a few things to do before the kid gets here. <laughs> And we will further demonstrate that the accused had been stealing prescription drugs from the victim. And when Mr. McCord objected, the accused beat Mr. McCord to death. And a little later, we checked in Michael's locker, and there was a plastic bag of pills in the pocket of his work clothes. And what were those pills? Oxycodone. It's a painkiller, a narcotic. And did Henry McCord have a prescription for oxycodone? Yes. And then I saw him go into Henry's room, and I heard Henry cry out. When I went to investigate, Michael was standing over Henry, and Henry's crutch was in his hand. A couple days later, Michael came to the Whitewood, and he threatened to kill me if I told anyone what I'd seen. When did you last eat? I don't need to. Yes, you do. We're in these places to die. Just let me get on with it. My mouth is a little dry. Just give me a little water. Thank you. Esther, you have to eat something. Now tell me, what's happened? 
My lawyer wants me to testify. Oh, good. Good. The jury will believe you. We'll see. Yeah. Always a pessimist. Realist, I like to think. Pessimist, pessimist, pessimist. I saw my father. Was that hard? It wasn't easy. But I didn't hate him. Not like I thought I would. He wanted me to drink with him. That was the hardest part. And watching him cry. We cried. He didn't know my mother had died. I almost felt sorry for him. She was his wife. Pathetic old drunk. He just started to pour another. It's stronger than he is. Maybe that's why he left. To protect you and your mother. Protect us? From himself, from his weakness. Maybe he saw the damage he was doing and knew he couldn't stop it, and so he left. To protect you, yes? Not him. He said he cried. For himself. Maybe for all of you. Oh, uh, you'll see. Things will work out, Michael. For you and Faye. I have great faith. Hello? Oh, is that you, Faye Morrow? This is Esther Hewish. Who? Esther Hewish. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I, I remember you. We talked on a bench at Whitewood. Michael's in trouble. He needs to know that the people he cares about believe in him. I do. Then why haven't you called him? You can't believe the problems between you are all his fault. If you love him, you have to talk to him, work things out. He really needs you, you know. Dr. Heath, when the defendant brought you Mr. McCord on October 24th, did you prescribe any new medications for Mr. McCord? Yes, I did. One for his cough and one to relieve pain. Was the painkiller oxycodone? No, he had been on oxycodone previously, and I wanted to try something else. Now, you testified earlier that you found bruises on Mr. McCord's back and hip. Did you treat those bruises? No, they seemed to be healing on their own. Were they recent bruises? No, based on their color and tenderness, my estimate is they were a week to 10 days old when I saw him. Your Honor, I would like the record to note that the defendant started working at the Whitewood on October 21st, three days before he took Mr. McCord to the doctor. Clearly, something or someone else was responsible for those bruises. Dr. Heath, so, uh... How many patients do you see in a month, uh, approximately? Hundreds. Hundreds. So you seriously expect us to believe that three months after the fact, you can remember the specific color of one patient's bruises? No. I don't remember. But the defense counsel called me about the drug prescriptions. I looked up my notes. I keep very detailed notes about each of my patients. I have them here if you'd like me to read from them. That won't be necessary. Raise your right hand, please. Put your left hand on the Bible. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give to this court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Take the stand, please. Mr. Keddington, did you steal or use any prescription drugs while you were working at the Whitewood? Michael. I'm sorry? Did you steal or use any prescription drugs while you were working at the Whitewood? No, I did not. Did you hit or hurt Henry McCord at any time? No, I did not. Did you kill Mr. McCord? No, I did not. Thank you. Isn't it true that when Alice Richards left you alone with Mr. McCord, he was alive? 
Yes. And then when he was next seen, he was dead. I don't know. I mean, someone could have easily gone in his room after I left. Someone. But you are the one who was actually in his room. And you were the one with stolen drugs in your locker. Objection, Your Honor. And you were the one who threatened Objection. a co-worker when she exposed you. Objection! Sustained. Counsel, stop battering the witness. All rise. This court is adjourned until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Amanda, could you step outside for a moment? I've got something to show you. Sure. Hi. Hi. I don't believe it. Somebody set me straight. At today's lunch break, I went to the Whitewood. I got these records. I want you to take a look at them. When I testified, I didn't realize that Dr. Heath had changed Henry's prescription. Alice neglected to tell me that. I suspect she didn't want me to know. But why would she hide that? Henry's prescription for oxycodone wasn't canceled. It was simply replaced by the new drug. You mean Alice could have refilled the old prescription? Yes. Usually they provide for refills. She could have done it anywhere. We use several different pharmaceutical dispensaries. Can you get me a list of those? And what about the other drugs? I mean, she could have been doing this with other prescriptions. It's hard to believe. It's very dangerous to use these drugs. Alice knows that. Maybe she's addicted. Or maybe she's selling them. <sighs> so, I have been just trying to figure things out. And all I can come up with is that I love you as much as ever. And no matter what happens with the trial, I just want us to be together. What if I go to prison, Faye? For a long time, I won't allow you to tie yourself down. I know what I'm doing, Michael. You don't have to protect me. Why do you say that? Protect me. Because that's what you're doing, protecting me from yourself. And then Faye walked into the courtroom, and, well, that was incredible. Wonderful. Wonderful. I'm so happy for you. You said she'd come back. She's here with me now. Uh, I told you so. <laughs> what about you? Are you uh, feeling any better? Oh, much better. Michael, you there? Yeah. Michael, I want to tell you that I love you. I love you too, Esther. Good night. Your Honor, this is dated November 15th and conclusively proves that Alice Richards refilled a prescription for oxycodone long after it had been changed to a different medication by Mr. McCord's doctor. No, even so, Your Honor, this has no bearing on the charges against the defendant. Your Honor, I would now like Alice Richards to be recalled. Miss Richards, do the lockers at Whitewood actually have locks? No, they're more like cubby holes. So it would be easy, say, for someone to have placed drugs in Michael's locker? I suppose. <laughs> now, aside from Helen Staples, you are the only other one at Whitewood authorized to order prescriptions, correct? It's one of my responsibilities, yes. Does the name Ethel Morrison mean anything to you? No. No? Mm -hmm. How about Leah Marsh? No? Anna Crockett, Lucille Hammond, Jacob Rumney, Harvey Stromberg? I don't know. I, they could have all been patients. Yes, that's right, Miss Richards. They were all patients at the Whitewood during the last two years. Do you know what else they had in common? They were old. They, too, had prescriptions for either oxycodone, the drug that was found in Michael's locker, or for alprazolam. Now, since then, some of these people have either died or gone home, yet you continued to refill their prescriptions. Why? I didn't. Yes, Alice, you did, actually, every month. Seven different prescriptions. I have the proof from the dispensary. I want a lawyer? You were also stealing drugs from Mr. McCord. So what happened, Alice? Did he threaten to expose you? I said I want a lawyer. I mean, you were just trying to keep him quiet, right? I mean, you didn't mean to kill him. I'm not saying anything else until I get a lawyer. Mrs. Ibarra, Mr. Palmer, would you please approach the bench? 
Mr. Palmer, it sounds to me like you have the wrong person on trial here. Well, I don't need a judge to tell me you're innocent. I told you so. <laughs> Michael, I have a special favor to ask. Yeah, of course. What is it? What do you need? You take this locket back to the boarding house in Beveltown. You put it on the mantle where it was first given to me. That is where I discovered my love. That is where I let him go. That is where my heart belongs. Now, this is for you. This is the ring Thomas gave me. You wouldn't take it back. What you do with it is for you to decide. Helen. We lost you this morning. I'm sorry. We should have been here. No. She didn't want us to see her die. You sure about this? No. It's gonna be a long haul. We'll do it together. Dad, I'd like you to meet Faye. It's nice to meet you. Hi, Faye. It's nice to meet you. The woman I'm gonna marry. Good for you, Mikey. 